that means it's recording. Ryan's room. 1019, pretty funny, because it was number 10. Hey, buddy. Hey. How's it going? Rough night? Uh, it's May 7th, uh, just after 8.35. Uh, on the agenda today, I got physio and maybe a couple visitors, but we'll let you know what goes on during the day. It's been a month since the Broncos crash. If you feel like you can let go and bring one hand onto your legs. Ryan Stretsnitsky is just beginning his long therapy regimen. Today, a seemingly simple task kind of takes forward. immense effort. Break to my ankles? Yep. Your knees are really flexible. And you pick that leg up and cross your ankles. Good, nice. So this, like you can see if you had a pair of shorts or something like that, you got your foot free so you can hook it over there. Okay. Yeah. Well, then bring it back and try it over. Yep. Okay. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> Legs are really heavy. Yeah. Ryan was thrown from the team bus. His spinal injury was to his mid-back, paralyzing his legs and his trunk from the mid-chest down. Is this your first time doing this yeah. with a sock? Yeah. Jesus. Even this much effort fatigues him. Do you want a pillow? Uh, no. Yeah, okay. God. Yes. You make mom cry. Way to go, no, buddy. The horrifying crash between the hockey team's bus and a transport truck changed 30 lives forever. 15 Broncos players and staff died along with the bus driver. The truck driver faces multiple charges of manslaughter. Ryan and 12 of his teammates survived, but they are left foraging through the trauma. We first got to know Ryan through his mom, Michelle, less than 48 hours after the crash. Better than average chance that he won't play hockey again, or possibly even walk, we're not sure. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Finally. Yeah. We caught up with Ryan himself a few weeks later after he was transferred to Foothills Medical Center in Calgary. What have been some of the most difficult moments for you? Like not being able to, like, sorry. It's okay. If it's too tough, don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Just not being able to go to the funerals. Uh, it's May 14th. Uh, New week, more physio, and the CLAD goes. Six weeks into recovery, Ryan is working on his upper body and core strength, even just to roll over and sit up. Nice. Balance is tricky. So one method is angling your bum this way, and then lifting your legs in one at a time. Legs come that way? Yep. Good. There you go. Nice step. Ready? Okay. Ready? Okay. Ready? Okay. Beautiful. Nice. Okay. Dad Tom is recording every development. Turn the camera Hey, just focus. You capture this. Ryan was the firstborn to Michelle and Tom. Twins Jet and Jaden followed, and then baby Connor. Ryan worked his way up the hockey ladder, Bantam, then Midget AAA, with the Leduc Oil Kings, before he joined the Broncos last year. It's uh, May 18th. Today we have a couple physio sessions. Uh, Erica, my girlfriend, arrived <laughs> last night. And yeah, we're just, she's staying for the long weekend. <laughs> Ryan met Erica Burns from Montmartre, Saskatchewan, just two months before the crash. A teammate introduced them. On that horrible night, she got to the hospital before his parents, and she's been loyal ever since. Still, the two of them are now embarking on a relationship neither could have ever imagined. It's now end of May. Ryan's parents are packing him up at the hospital. Now, the nursing staff are saying you're, you're quite good at transferring over from bed to bed and shuffling and assisting. <laughs> They've taken an offer from the Shriners Charity to go to a renowned rehab hospital in Philadelphia, all paid. 
The family thinks he can progress faster there. They're still holding out hope. He might regain sensation in his legs, maybe even walk again. hospital in Philadelphia becomes Ryan's new training camp. Pool time. Including a first session in the pool. More, right? But that sense of weightlessness feels like freedom. The okay, Marin's going under this time, buddy. Even if he's afraid he'll sink. Ryan's on a mission. Today, the exercise with physiotherapist Kristen Cray is falling backwards. What to do? Now what? I'm going to take those fits. <laughs> I don't know, but this feels weird. It feels really weird, doesn't yeah. it? You protected your head, so you're good. All right, so here, hold the front ends of the frame here. You can hold yourself in the chair. Yeah. He'll need to instruct people to help him get upright, and it's not easy. I like to say that we're working on the fundamentals and the foundation of transfers and sitting balance and rolling, just rolling over from left to right and then, okay, I'm on my side, how do I sit up? And now in your wheelchair, you can push across a linoleum surface of the hospital, but can you push across the sidewalk that is not level and has bumps? <laughs> okay, now push forward, push forward, push forward, push forward. Okay. You've described him, others have as a star student. Yeah. In some respects. Have you seen frustration? Every once in a while, and um, he channels it uh, in different ways where he'll just be quiet about something or um, he's just left, like, let me do left, that again. Left, 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 left. Oh. There better not be a six inch curve anywhere else. Did you see him give up? Never. This week or next week, we've got a lot to work on, huh? Yeah. You don't change them after an injury. They are the same person they were before the injury. And so you see that carry through in their rehab and yeah. their activities beyond um, the hospital setting. Part of the challenge is to avoid complete atrophy of leg muscles. So to encourage movement, they need to manipulate his legs, putting him first in a harness in preparation for a treadmill. Go up a little more. How's it feel pulling on you up top, Ryan? Like, do you feel it against your chest or your shoulder? As Kristen Cray and her team simulate a walking movement, Ryan watches himself standing upright for the first time since the crash. What did it feel like today on that treadmill? Uh, it was surreal. I mean, just being able to see yourself walk again. It was pretty cool. I mean, I tried my best to do what I could, tried to move my legs, but I mean, they, they did it for me and hopefully it'll help in the long run. When you came down here, what was your hope? Uh, just to be more independent, you know, um, obviously, you know, every guy wants to walk again and but I was just coming here hoping to get stronger, being able to adapt to a new way of life. Joining us on stage right now, the Humboldt Broncos. Motivating Ryan all this time was a trip to the NHL Awards in Las Vegas, a physical and mental challenge. It was the first time he'd seen most of the surviving Broncos since those critical days in hospital. It was fantastic. It was like being in the locker room again. It's almost like time froze and you're just enjoying the moment. Did you cry? No, I, I can't cry in front of the guys, but uh, no, it was definitely emotional and it was a good time. So did you talk, did you? Oh yeah, we talked about everything. Um, you know, how, how things were going, what their plan is for the future. I know nobody can really experience what we experienced and we know each other too well, so. Um, it's, it's just good to lean on them. The attention doesn't stop with Vegas. The Broncos touch so many internationally. In Philadelphia, Ryan becomes a bit of a local celebrity. Ryan Strasbinski. The Phillies honor him as their special guest. Everybody's talking about you. We're just so happy to have you guys here. Thank you. Awesome. Wow. Take a video, Mom. It's all very heady. Private tour. Exciting and unexpected. 
But when the spotlight goes away, there are the unavoidable reminders of loss. Tom is Ryan's chief cheerleader, counsel, and life coach. Gets me is just looking at him, what he used to be able to do three months ago, to what he can't do now. It kind of hits me on that one, but then I just look forward and go, let's work a different corner, work a different path, and we can get through it. Let's what frustrates him? Uh, staring at his legs and <clears throat> trying to make a move, but they can't move. Oh, and what really frustrates him is not being able to move his core. And well, deep down, we know it's the people that he lost, his teammates and all that. But Still? still oh, yeah, every day. Really? Yeah. It's now early July, time to go home, but not before a visit to Philadelphia's iconic monument to fighting back, the Rocky Steps. The story of how the underdog boxer Rocky Balboa fought his way up is not lost on Ryan. Lots of ruts in those paving stones. Oh, you okay there, buddy, or? Yeah, I don't know. Huh. Here's our test, I guess. Yeah. Ryan probably imagined tearing up here two steps at a time once. It's different now. In July, Ryan comes back to Alberta on a commercial flight, moving easily now in his wheelchair. The hometown media is waiting. So welcome home. How's it feel? Feels good. But Ryan can't go home yet. The family home he grew up in is waiting, but it needs a major renovation to make it accessible. What's this? That's great. Somebody made that from all the sticks they put around the hockey rink oh, just up here. That's cool. And then he dropped it off. So you're going to renovate this house? Wow, yes. this is hockey house. Memorabilia everywhere. This is hockey house. <laughs> Did you push Ryan into hockey? Um, started him and learned to skate, and then he hated it, and then we got him into hockey, hated it, and then he slowly started to like it, so I said, okay, let's go. Any regrets? No. No. Because hockey teaches you life, teaches you teamwork, teaches you what the world's going to be like and how to deal with things, so. In spades now. Oh, big time. Look at all the support he got. Hi there. Hey, Stewie. Hey. Ever no. since the night of the crash, right, family friend TJ Stewart has so, been a rock. Uh, I'll give you some updates on what's going on here, Tom. All right, buddy. So first you organize all, neighbors to uh, gut the basement. Uh, your elevator, of course, is going to be installed in the garage. It's gonna, and helped uh, raise nearly $200,000 for uh, rehab and the reno, in including offers of building materials. Uh, but it's going to take months. So... Ryan and his family move into the Wingate Hotel in Airdrie. Nice to meet you. Welcome. For as long as they need to, courtesy of the hotel's owner. Is your own Pepsi? Ryan takes the accessible ground floor room. Aw, look at the family. The three other kids and their parents split two other rooms. Michelle is essentially running a house in a hotel. There are days when I just, I kind of miss the simplicity of just going to work and coming home and not having all of the craziness. It's really hard, it's awkward, it's very awkward, but we're getting there. The lobby has become their living and dining rooms. Tom calls it Strasgate, not Wingate. The changes to their family life are really settling in now especially for Ryan. The days that he doesn't have physio, I think, are the hardest for him because he doesn't know what to do with himself. Um, I think just the enormity of, of what he's facing is, is hitting him sometimes, but there's other times when I know he, he feels, yeah, a little bit left behind, I think. Okay, can we, we just need to move that, Tom, can you lift that thing? Slide you back just a tiny bit. Yeah. I'm just gonna lift you Ryan up is happiest media. heading back, back to the ball. ice. So don't try and just hammer the puck, right? For the first time, wearing the Broncos helmet and gloves, sledge hockey veterans talked up the sport back in the first few weeks after the crash. They've got their eye on Ryan as a potential Team Canada player, maybe. Erica 
His girlfriend is moving from Saskatchewan to Alberta to be with him. I'm going to fall. Yeah, you will. You look like an hockey player. Summer is fading. Any other year, Ryan would have been at hockey camp by now. I was nervous today. Instead, Tom helps get the day going. It's Thursday, August 23rd. I uh, woke up, the nerves weren't too bad today. Um, Sunday, Erica moves in, so I'm pretty excited for that. Five months ago, he couldn't even raise himself out of bed. This is real progress. His morning routine can take an hour and a half, but now dad can leave. And Ryan's just a 19-year-old again, with things to do and his independence coming back. His scars aren't fully healed, outside or inside. But he has taken to heart the idea that he is not defined by his legs. I think everything I've worked up to, you know, it just keeps keeps going and going. I keep getting better and better. What's been the worst thing? Um, I think just the distance from everyone. I mean, everyone's going away for hockey or, and or school, but now you got to kind of figure out what to do now because, I mean, everyone's lives has been changed. So, I mean, I usually think about it every day. It takes a while. I think it's never going to leave my mind, to be honest, but... Um, do you ever get angry still? Not really, no. I'm sort of becoming more of accepting and, and being mindful of it, but not letting it get to me. You're not going back to Humboldt for the first game? No, I, I won't be able to make it, I don't think. Why? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I love the Broncos and the organization was amazing. I just, I don't want to, you know, watch the team that I should be playing on right now. So um, I wish them all the best of luck and, and, and everything during the season, but I, I just don't think I can go watch. Just too hard? I think so, yeah. Back in May, socks were the goal. Ryan's mastered a whole lot of life skills since then. I mean, it's only been five months and, and look where I am now. And the energy that fueled his ambition in hockey is being rerouted. We haven't heard the last from this former humble Bronco, number 10. <laughs>